Hello everyone, this is Michael Tech from Supermicro. Today we're going to be speaking with Telefonica about their initiatives in ORAN. Telefonica has been a leading proponent in the industry of Open RAN. And today I'm very pleased to say I have Javier Loke with me who heads up the Open RAN and new radio solutions at Telefonica. He will share with us the benefits and importance of ORAN to Telefonica and with working with Supermicro. So he will follow up with a video and then a short presentation, and then we will move on to Q&A. Okay, good morning everyone. Thanks for joining this session. My name is Javier Lorca. I work in Global CTIO in the Access and Devices Direction. I'm responsible for the Open RAN initiative in Telefonica Corporate. And uh, I will focus my presentation on explaining the details of the Open RAN ecosystem collaboration that we launched at the beginning of this year and explaining the rationale for, for Open RAN in Telefonica. So as you can see this slide, um, these are the principles we understand uh, in, in Open RAN, uh, both in terms of uh, initiatives and components. The initiatives that we want to promote as part of the Open RAN activity is to first to decouple the software uh, from the hardware. So that means procuring and optimizing independently the, all the software components from the hardware elements and having the hardware all based on x86 servers. Opening the chipset, that means using standard chipsets from the IT world and selecting the best family according to the performance and the capacity in the radio required for 4G and 5G. Having open APIs as part of the software stack to facilitate, for example, the deployment of new services and integrate new components from different vendors, for example, edge computing applications, uh, virtual reality platforms, uh, even integration with the fixed network, so a, a whole bunch of new services and, and capabilities in the radio. Opening the RF chain, that means connecting through an open standard like an ORAN ECP interface with a different uh, radio units from different suppliers uh, in a completely open way, as long as the ORAN specifications are, are fulfilled, and hence uh, helping commodita commoditize uh, the radio component as part of the ecosystem. And finally, having, having an open books, so that means uh, having transparency in the costs uh, as given by the, the standard components inside the radios and the basements, the chipsets, the elements there, and having a full control of all the ecosystem and widening the, the ecosystem, introducing new partners to diversify the supply chain and uh, have a better 
sort of to say a market uh, perspective in terms of uh, hardware components, software components, and you know widening the ecosystem in the end. And this slide about the architecture, I think, is very important because one one of the points uh, usually confusing when you talk about open run is it, to which extent the radio should be cloudified. So this is a picture showing a distributed run, more a traditional run architecture as of today. That means having all the baseband processing at the at the site, and the baseband unit comprises all the digital processing together with the radio, and everything is a, a, a virtual uh, sorry a vertical implementation of a given vendor. No, all the elements follow proprietary interfaces and proprietary hardware and software components. Uh, what is called Cloud Run Split 2 and Cloud Run Split 7 are the domains that we want to foster in Open Run. Uh, so Open Run is either a Cloud Run Split 2 or a Cloud Run Split 7 with open definition of all the interfaces and decoupling the hardware from the software using standard components uh, everywhere. So that means in Split 2, we have part of the processing at the, at the site and only the control plane and as a small part of the, the PDCP layer, a small part of the data plane processing at the central unit, at the data center. And this comes from the requirements in the transport. In split two, the requirements for the mid hole is the interface between the DU and the CU is actually very similar to those at the back hole. So that means you can reuse to a large extent your existing back hole network uh, for the run. Whereas in C-Run split seven, you actually virtualize most of the baseband, leaving only the lowest uh, physical layer and the RF components, the RF processing components at the radio site. And uh, the DU and the CU can reside in data centers, either in the same data center or in different locations. But actually this uh, puts stringent limits in the transport uh, in terms of delay and bandwidth uh, that are actually especially stringent for 5G applications. Uh, 5G applications with a large bandwidth and uh, small delays actually require very good front hole networks, actually dark fibers or point to point fibers between the sites and the data centers. And that you cannot always benefit from in, in, your, in your deployment. So in many cases, you can only go for split two. In others, you can go for split seven and both are the domains of, of open RAM. Actually, the, the optimal architecture in terms of virtualization capabilities is actually split seven. But of course, it all depends on the transport in the countries. This picture shows actually a, one of the most challenging tasks that we are having in Open RAM. And, and it's one of the reasons why we selected the Supermicro in, in our consortium. It's actually making optimizing the, the DU at the site in those cases in split two, in those cases that where you require the DU at the site as a standalone box, uh, of course, coupled with the radio and coupled with the central unit at the data center, but uh, being able to, um, you know, uh, uh, cope with different carriers in 4G, cope with different carriers in 5G, cope with massive MIMO, cope with the most stringent uh, scenarios uh, in terms of traffic demand and 5G performance, that you can have in, in, in our networks. Uh, in, in, the, in the highest dense areas, in urban areas, we can have up to four different bands that you have to combine uh, at the DU. You can couple also with 5G, with massive MIMO, with 32T, 32R radios, or 64T, 64R. That's a lot of capacity that you have to optimize in a DU that has to be cost efficient with a very small power consumption to be competitive with existing uh, uh, traditional hardware from, from the incumbent RAM vendors. And of course, with some, some elements uh, being uh, optimized, like the FEC acceleration, the hardware acceleration that is required by the, the forward error correction, that you can make it with FPGA cards or with, or with ASICs. It's always more, more efficient to do with ASICs and have the uh, lowest possible power consumption. So actually optimizing all these hardware elements uh, in a single box, for 4G and 5G, being 5G ready with standard interfaces and with um, the highest possible uh, processing power at the DU is one of the most challenging tasks. Also because of constructive reasons, because the, this DU has to fit in the existing cabinets and the existing cabinets in many cases pose restrictions in terms of the power dissipation, cooling, ventilation, even the depth of the servers. You actually face more constraints compared to uh, the cases where you are in a data center with uh, more like a standard service, 19, 19 inches racks and so on. So having this kind of unit for 4G and for 5G is one of the most challenging tasks. And that's why we selected Supermicro together with Intel 
and with other companies in the consortium to optimize uh, the hardware elements here. And finally, just a note about the standard support. All this activity in Telefonica uh, leverages the, the current ecosystem of industry partners. Of course, uh, fulfilling and respecting the specifications from 3GPP. And in those cases where 3GPP doesn't provide um, you know, a, a full-fledged solution, we resort to the ORAN specifications, particularly in terms of the interfaces between, uh, between the logical elements and also the front hall, particularly the front hall interface, the split 7-2. Uh, from ORAN. Also, we can leverage some small cell forum for things like uh, connecting small cells to the data center with what is called split six, which is a very popular alternative um, to optimize the connection of the small cells with the data centers. And we also leverage many activities done in the TIP project led by Facebook, uh, where we all participate in different work groups, and that promotes the use and the lab testing of open source, open source technologies and different uh, hardware and software elements in the lab and also in the field, and also helping accelerate the, the ecosystem uh, by supporting trials and, and, and helping the ecosystem drive uh, for the new entrants with consistent IPR policies and with uh, you know, all, all the activities required to make this happen. So we are leveraging these activities, so we are not uh, like inventing the, the, the standards. We are being supported by all these activities and actually will be very important for, for Open RAM. Okay, so thank you very much, and we can go directly to the Q&A session. Hello. Well, thank you, Javier. That was a great presentation, and looks like a lot of work going on there. So, you know, from a business point of view, why is OVAN important to Telefonica? What are your goals and what would you like to achieve? Mm. So actually, thanks, Michael. Actually, Open RAN is a, a pretty exciting new thing. Uh, it's like reinventing, it's like joining a lot of uh, innovations in the radio side together with the business uh, perspectives, the best business perspectives and expectations uh, from 5G and also for the evolution of 5G that all operators uh, would dream about. It's like, for example, taking control of uh, mm, the, the ability to expose services in an agile and web-like model for our customers to be able to mix and match different pieces from different software providers, from even from startups or new companies that want to propose new things like, for example, orchestrating an intelligent manner the rate of resources, applying new, exciting, innovative services for the customers, being able to uh, integrate the radio and the fixed networks in an intelligent way. So all these have to go through the uh, cloud-based model of cloudifying and virtualizing whatever we can in the radio side. And of course, leveraging all the ecosystem of existing processing power from IT world, from x86 standards, from hardware, from silicon that has its own pace of evolution and can leverage the latest technologies in you know, transistors, and nanometers, gates, and all this logic, and actually focus on the, focusing all the efforts in the software, where the software, the, the, all the intelligence resides in the software, and everybody agrees that, uh, you know, in 5G, we have to monetize everything. And monetizing comes from inventing new, new ways to, to take advantage of all the 5G, the advantages of 5G. The bandwidth and the delay itself is not is for nothing if you don't provide a new, like, uh, useful quality of experience for the customers. Okay. So, over okay. One, tries to combine all these things. And of course, it's very challenging because it's something that has to happen. And yeah. particularly in the most demanding scenarios from, you know, in the urban areas with uh, challenging radios and uh, a lot of capacity required. Uh, so we want all this to, 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 to happen. And you recently did a press announcement around ORAN with a number of partners. I see our time's getting short, but briefly, why? what is the attraction to working with Supermicro for you in as you go on this journey? So actually, when we met Supermacro, we were very surprised, positively surprised of the capacity, first, the agility and the flexibility that it was evident since the first discussions that uh, Supermacro could have the ability to actually uh, shape uh, the products and even the you know the components or the direction in the in the components in the boxes in the in the x86 servers to our needs. And also with the, the use of the most advanced technologies for integrating many elements, processing power, capacity, or actually transforming even the shape of the service to the best to our needs in terms of the 
the power dissipation, the cabling, the access to the servers. So all these things were actually essential for these times in, in Open RAN, where we want to shape all the IT ecosystem towards cellular world. Uh, this means transforming all the hardware and software elements. So actually, it, it proved a very useful collaboration, and we're actually happy with that. OK, well, thank you very much. I think that's all the time we have. So I'd like to ask everybody to join our next session, um, Super Micro Technology on 5G Micro Data Centers. There's a link at the bottom of your screen. And thank you for joining us today, and look forward to interacting with you more in future. And thank you, Javier, very much. Thank you. Thank you.